Hello and welcome to the Orthodox View, where we discuss latest religious news from an Orthodox Christian perspective. I am its host, Philip Champion. The primate of the canonical Ukrainian Orthodox Church, his Beatitude Metropolitan Anufri of Kiev and all Ukraine, comes in at number 15 in the Vesti Media ranking called Top 100 People and Phenomena of Ukraine. All the other Ukrainian religious leaders are left far behind. The commentary to the ranking says that Metropolitan Anufri is, I quote, modest and ascetic, an example worthy of imitation. Having been led by him throughout the crisis years, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church has toughened up and preserved its spiritual strength. Moreover, the transfer in process has reversed. Among the communities that switched over to the Orthodox Church of Ukraine in 2018, there are already those who are ready to return to the canonical church. The head of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, Svetoslav Shevchuk, came in at number 58 in the ranking, and the chief rabbi of Kiev and Ukraine, Moshe Rovin Azman, at number 62. It is interesting that the head of the so-called Orthodox Church of Ukraine, Epifani Dumenko, came in at number 63, having lost as much as seven positions compared to last year. As the creators of the ranking explained, the head of the OCU continues to lose points. I quote, After the support of the OCU by the previous government in terms of state registration of the transitions of parishes in western and central Ukraine has ended, voluntary transitions practically stopped. Let us remind you that earlier Metropolitan Anufri was ranked as the most influential spiritual leader of Ukraine according to the national ranking called the Elites of Ukraine 2021. The secularizing shifts evident in American society so far in the 21st century show no signs of slowing, according to the newest data from the Pew Research Center. Christians continue to make up a majority of the U.S. populace, but their share of the adult population is 12 points lower in 2021 than it was in 2011. The decline in the proportion of Christians is not the result of an increase in the number of people practicing a different religion. In total, only 6% of Americans identify themselves as non-Christian. However, the number of people who call themselves atheists, agnostics, or non-religious has significantly grown in the last 10 years. They now make up to 29% of the U.S. population, which is a serious increase from the 19% in 2011. At the same time, agnostics and atheists make up 9%. Their number has almost doubled since 2011. 20% say they believe in some kind of supernatural force, but do not consider themselves adherents of any religion. The study also reports that about half of the U.S. adult population pray daily. Only 41% of Americans consider religion very important in their lives, which is a decrease from 56% in the year 2007. Thirteen Christian patriarchs and heads of churches of Jerusalem published a statement drawing the attention of state authorities and the public to the threat to the Christian presence in the Holy Land, which is caused in particular by the activities of radical groups, to the facts of physical violence and insults against the clergy, attacks against Christian churches and acts of vandalism against shrines, as well as attempts to violate the integrity and cultural identity of the Christian quarter of the old city in order to ultimately expel the Christian community from Jerusalem. Metropolitan Hilarion of Volokolamsk, chairman of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations, commented on the difficult interfaith situation in the Holy City. In an interview with the Russian news agency Ria Novosti, he expressed concern that what is happening in Jerusalem could lead not only to the eventual loss of unrestricted access to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, but also to displacement of Christians in the Holy City. The hierarch noted that this is a common problem for all Christians, not just Orthodox. Jerusalem is a unique city which is held sacred by the three religions. Many wars had been fought for centuries to have it. There had been a lot of struggle and enmity. No one has won a victory, but this complicated process has resulted in the establishment of a certain balance of forces. It has been achieved through suffering of many generations, and its upsetting may have grave consequences. 
For several years now, the Orthodox Church of Jerusalem has been trying to defend its rights to several pilgrim houses in the Christian quarter of Jerusalem, which are contested by Jewish public organizations. If the pilgrimage houses become the property of Jewish owners, the pilgrimage route from the Jaffa Gate of Jerusalem to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre may be completely blocked, and the right of passage through it for Christians may be lost. The Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban has accused Western European governments of having embarked on a grand exercise in human experimentation by mixing huge masses of Muslims with indigenous Christians in the hope that something good would come of it. Viktor Orban said that on the air of the Hungarian radio Kossuth. Orban stressed that he never believed in this experiment. He noted that Hungary is a special country because they are the only one in which the people had held a referendum on immigration. The Prime Minister contrasted this with the situation in Western Europe, where, I quote, the governments, the elites, think that immigration is a good thing, and so they let in huge numbers of immigrants. At the same time, the head of the Hungarian government stressed that the EU rules on migration quotas will not have priority over the Hungarian constitution and the results of the referendum. Let us remind you that in 2016, Hungary held a referendum on the redistribution of migrants among the EU countries. Then the overwhelming majority of Hungarians, about 95%, expressed support for Viktor Orban that the EU should not force Hungary to accept migrants. For the first time, Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople received a delegation from the so-called Macedonian Orthodox Church, which is not recognized by world orthodoxy. The meeting took place in Istanbul. In the Macedonian Church, they characterized the meeting with the following words. Having arranged a magnificent reception, Patriarch Bartholomew expressed paternal concern for all of us. In the end, we all received a blessing from him by kissing his holy right hand. The Macedonian Schism began in 1967, when the Ocrate Council of the Macedonian clergy and laity, without the blessing and appropriate decision of the Serbian Church, declared its church autocephalous. The autocephaly is not recognized by any of the local Orthodox churches. Here's what Archimandrite Jovan Radosavljevic, a close friend of Serbian Patriarch Pavle of blessed memory, wrote about this event. The church schism in Macedonia has been going on for a long time and has inflicted many wounds on Serbia, Macedonia and the entire Orthodox Church. This schism was created with the active participation of the Macedonian Communist Party in 1967. Josip Broz Tito, then awarded Metropolitan Dositheos for the conquest of victory and the organization of an independent Macedonian church. Therefore, the process of self-proclamation of the autocephaly of the Macedonian church was completed with the blessing of the communists and not with the blessing of the Serbian Orthodox Church. So the question arises, why did Patriarch Bartholomew meet the delegation from the so-called Macedonian Orthodox Church? According to the Bishop Anthony of Moravia from the Serbian Orthodox Church, if the Patriarch of Constantinople single-handedly decides to grant autocephaly to the non-recognized communities in North Macedonia and Montenegro, as he did in Ukraine, then the Eucharistic communion between Constantinople and the Serbian Church could be seized. This is all for today. Thank you for watching and see you next time on the Orthodox View.